Today, I'd like to do a video, um, again on this, uh, on the radial arm saw. This is a uh, Delta uh, Super 900. I'm sorry, a Delta Super 990. Um, there are a couple of reasons I like this saw. Uh, one is these, uh, it's hard to see in the camera. Let me relocate the camera a little bit. You see these knobs right down here? There's two of them. And those cinch the backboard against the table, the fixed table. This backboard's, of course, removable, and you can put in uh, narrow ones, wider ones, whatever, uh, depending on if you want to rip, uh, have the blade back further to rip uh, wider material, or to have the material, the fence back further so you can rip wider material out here. So I like this. I also uh, very much um, like, see if we can zoom in on that. There is a crank. Let's see if it shows up on the, yeah, there's a crank right here. And each revolution of this crank raises that blade an eighth, uh, I'm sorry, a sixteenth of an inch. I really like that because I'm short and it is difficult for me to uh, being short, 5'6", it is difficult for me to uh, uh, reach. Uh, some of the saws have the crank back here on the top uh, of the arm. And that, that is very difficult for me to reach and, and crank. I, I generally have to come around the edge of the saw and come around over here. So I, I really, uh, being a short person, I really do like this, this crank um, at the front of the saw. Uh, it, it just makes it easier for me. That's one thing I like about this old Delta. And th this was probably made in about 1961 or two, something like that. I also like uh, the fact that it has a brake on the side where when you turn the saw on, I mean, you, you can stop that blade almost instantly, uh, which uh, makes it nice when you're, when you're trying to do repetitive cuts. So that's one thing I like. Um, the other is these are really robust saws. Um, this is at the lower end of the power range. This is a 10 amp saw. Uh, I've got a uh, Dewalt that I haven't uh, complete. I haven't put a, a new table on it. I haven't uh, uh, fixed it up. I haven't done anything to it yet. And, I, and, I, and there's a lot I need to do to it before I can get it to where it cuts as nice as this one. But instead of being 10 amps, it's 17 amps. But that, that's enough on the saw. Uh, uh, I want to do a couple more different methods of testing. Yeah, if your saw is not cutting square, uh, and true, then there is there is no way you can do nice woodwork with a radial arm saw, and that's where most people fall into problems and, and learn to hate these saws because they don't spend the time it takes to tune them up. So I'm going to show you two more tests. Uh, the first test will be to uh, test for vertical plumb. Is is the blade straight up and down, vertical, perpendicular to this table, all right? So you have to have a straight board. It has to be parallel on both edges, and it has to be straight. Now, this, this, this cut will check two things. It'll check whether or not the blade is perpendicular, and it'll check whether or not your table is straight and flat, all right? So we'll make the cut. Just pass through, turn the saw off, then take the right hand piece and flip it over. Put the, the top on the bottom and the bottom on the top and then slide those two pieces together. If at the bottom of this crack, let me zoom in a little bit there. Okay. If, if these two boards, when you slide them together, if there's a crack at the top or the bottom, your saw is not cutting square. One of two things. Either your saw is not cutting square or your table is not flat. If this table is high on this side, 
uh, or low, you'll never get that crack to close up. But this one closes up perfectly. Right? It looks the same in this position as it looks in this position. So that saw is, not only is the blade perpendicular to the table, at, so I got a, a true 90, but the table is also straight and flat. Otherwise, that wouldn't come out correct. Now, that's, that's, one, that's one test that the saw has to pass before you start doing um, woodworking projects with your radial arm saw. The second test is this board, this board was, let me uh, zoom out a little bit again. Uh, this board was uh, about 20 inches long by nine inches uh, with two parallel sides. Uh, I cut it in half uh, doing a, a preliminary test, but it doesn't matter. You push both pieces up tight to the fence, all right? <coughs> then you start the saw and make one cut right down the middle of the, the, the cut that was there. So you're cutting a little off of each side. Slide them together, they're tight, right? They have to be because you just, it, it wouldn't matter if the saw was uh, two degrees off, it would still be tight. But here's the test to see if, if, if the saw really is 90 degrees. You take, I'm sorry, you take the right hand board and flip it over and slide it in, okay? It's tight front and back, which tells you that this saw is cutting square. If it was open at the back, let me zoom in a little. If that saw curve you just made was open at the back, that would mean that the saw is cutting out of square this way. If it was open, yeah, if it was open here, it would mean that the saw is, is running out this way and you'd have to go through this adjustment process, um, the adjustment process to get the thing uh, correct, which means you'd be back to loosening the Allen bolt under here, uh, loosening this up, and uh, uh, very finely turning this nut, just this nut underneath the red knob here, just the tiniest, tiniest amount at a time to get this thing squared up. But it, it's worth the effort because once you, once you get it, it stays there. Uh, Yes, uh, things wear, and over time, it's going to get a little out of adjustment uh, over the course of a year or two or so. So, you just run this test every now and then. Now, the problem with the, 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 the although the, the five-cut method that I used the other day is a good one, it only tests one side of the fence uh, on, on one side of the blade. It doesn't tell you if this fence is straight. Uh, so so you, you, it could be cut in square over here, but if you did the same test over here, it might not be cut in square. But this tells you that not only is the blade running square to the fence, but the fence is straight. All right, does that make any sense? So uh, these are important things. You, 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 uh, uh, you just gotta spend the time to tune the saw up if you're gonna expect to be able to make a, a jewelry box, for example, where all the little pieces fit together. Um, also, uh, uh, I finally got around to uh, uh, putting a box on the back. I don't know if the camera shows that. Uh, it doesn't show it. Yeah, I'll move the camera over there, I'll kick it around a little bit. And, and uh, I finally got around to uh, uh, adding uh, this box on the back. Uh, which uh, it, it's got a it's got a hose, vacuum cleaner hose connected into my dust devil connected into my shop back uh, that that probably picks up uh, fifty. I'm sorry, not fifty. Probably ninety to ninety five or ninety nine percent of the dust. Uh, I hadn't had that hooked up, and I'd been using the saw for uh, I don't know a week and a half or so without that maybe two weeks without that box and I literally creamed my shop with sawdust 
So I was very happy to get that uh, finally put on today. <laughs> it's just lazy, that's all. Anyway, um, uh, next maybe I'll do a video on, on how you adjust uh, the, making this adjustment right in here um, and how you uh, oh I know what I'll tell you okay uh, let's see, swing this around a little bit and we'll zoom in on the front of the saw now let's, let's say that your saw when you did your 90 degree cut here that you you found that the saw was not cutting square, that it was tilted this way or that way. That is fixed. Uh, there, there's, there's, there's two things you can do. The first thing you can do, what, as you have to do, is, well, uh, I always like to lock the, the carriage, the motor on the carriage so it's not moving all over the place, the motor and yoke. You loosen this clamp. That, 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 that clamps the, uh, the yoke to the motor and keeps it from twisting. Now, if it's out just a tiny little bit, sometimes you can get by by loosening this bolt and this bolt. Uh, loosen this one all the way and then tighten it back just a little bit where it's, where it's got just a little bit of pressure on it. Then loosen this one up, tighten it back where it's got a little bit of pressure on it. And then let's say that the saw has to go down on this side in order to get the blade to be square. Then you just take a board like this and give the saw a couple of wraps. Tighten the bolts back up, lock the clamp, and do your test cut. It, it may be that you won't be able to get enough adjustment here, all right? Uh, so behind this little Delta Rockwell tag, uh, there are two Allen screws. You got to remove these two uh, slotted screws to remove this, this uh, Delta tag, Delta Rockwell tag. Remove that, and those two... Allen screws are, are, you have to loosen them, so you, again, you loosen one side and then tighten it back down a little bit. You loosen the other side and tighten it back down a little bit. And now the thing should move. Give it a, give it a whack. If, if, if the saw is close, then just a couple of taps, you may not even be able to see that you did anything. Trust me, you probably did. T tighten the Allen screws back, um, well, Tighten the clamp to hold your, 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 your adjustment. Tighten these two Allen screws. All right, make sure these are tight. Make sure everything is locked in position. Give it a test cut and just continue with that adjusting process with those two Allen screws that are behind this delta plate until you've got this thing making a perfect cut. Perfectly plumb with those two, with those two ends come together you flip it over, they still come together perfectly, no gap, no light, um, and then you'll be set. So uh, those are two critical adjustments. Uh, uh, one made here behind the delta tag, and the other made with an Allen screw here, Allen screw here, and a wrench on this, uh, I'm probably not even in camera, and a wrench. Uh, so the, 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 to adjust the arm for 90 degrees when, you, when, you, when you're cutting the plywood, you, you have to loosen the Allen screw here, a bigger Allen screw underneath here, and then you make the adjustment here. It might be too tight. Uh, you might not be able to move it with a wrench. In that case, give this, loosen this a, another turn or so, and then whack the end of that uh, up because it's, it's bolted into a cone uh, that's into a milled hole uh, in this, in the lower arm. And so, yeah, it, it, it doesn't move all that easily. Uh, it get, in other words, it, it, it really pulls down. It's kind of like an A taper. It really pulls down in there tight. So, uh, but those are, those are important adjustments. Those, those, those are kind of where you start. And if you, if you haven't got that, uh, well, yeah, you're nowhere. Uh, next, I'll do a video on making sure the arm is, is, is parallel to the table at all its various locations. But that's, that's enough today. And uh, I hope... Uh, Possibly uh, this video uh, may, may have been of some value uh, to somebody that owns uh, a Delta or even a DeWalt saw. The, the processes are pretty much the same. So thanks for watching.